Hello and good morning. We're in week two, second marking period. That's what that little two right there means. Anyhow, we're going to find the slope, parallel, and perpendicular. Let's take a look at that. Hope you guys had a nice weekend. Well, for this one right here, you got to get y by itself. So draw a line, circle the y. You want to subtract 4x. So you're going to get 2y is equal to negative 4x plus 6. Then you're going to divide by 2. We're not worried about anything else. We want this. So the slope, a negative divided by a positive. One negative is a negative, and that's your slope. So for A, if you want uh, parallel, which I think was B, rather, that's A, parallel would be the same slope. Perpendicular, you got to flip change or negative reciprocal. So put negative 2 over 1 as a fraction and then flip it and change it. Well, when you change it, it becomes a plus and it becomes 1 half. And that will give you perpendicular. Make sure you understand you got to do two things to be perpendicular. Let's go on. This one right here wants to know an equation perpendicular. All right, so you got to take this one. you got to get y by itself. So you're going to subtract 3x from both sides, and you're going to get y equals this. This is your slope. But we want perpendicular, so put fc, put negative 3 over 1, and then flip it and change it. So when you do, you get that. Now let's use point slope. Point slope is y minus some y equals your slope, and then x minus some x. Copy that down. Well, my y is a negative 4. I'll use a different color here. And then my slope is one third, and then my x is negative two. Let's take a look and work this now. All right, so this is gonna be a plus, it's a double negative. Say that to yourself. Double negative is a plus. This becomes one over three x. This is a plus. Remember the trick, even though trick or treat is over. 1 times 2 is 2, 3 times 1 is 3, okay? Now what you want to do is subtract 4 from both sides. Now what you want to do here is change that 4 to a fraction. So put plus 2 over 3 minus 4 over 1. Now take the 1 and put it over here, which isn't going to change anything. Take the 3 and put it over here. So you're going to get 2 over 3 minus 12 over 3. You have a plus here. But you have more minuses. You have 10 more minuses. So the answer is going to be y equals 1 over 3x minus 10 over 3. And then you're done. Finished. OK, parallel and perpendicular. Today's work is another worksheet on this. So let's take a look at this. If you can't be with us, I'm going to upload it to Canvas. And the answer's over here. Show me some work, okay? All right, and remember, you have only from Friday to Sunday. No excuses. No late work. Microsoft Lens. Let's take a look here. It says find the slope. Well, you can use this point here. It's a negative 1 and then up 3. And then this point is a negative 2 and up 0. So slope is bubble minus bubble over bubble minus bubble. And your y's go up here. So I'm going to go backwards. I'm going to say 0 minus 3, negative 2 minus a negative 1. Notice my dolphins or my arrows are swimming in the same direction. So that becomes a plus. So I get a negative 3. Um, a negative 2 plus 1 is a negative 1. And 3 divided by 1 is 3. I have two negatives. That's it. That's my slope. 3 over 1 or 3. Either way, rise over run. Now you can also square it off. Look, draw a rectangle. Start from this point. You've got to go right 1 two, three, four. So you got to go right four. All right, let's see what that's going to do on this one. So right four, that's a sideways movement, so that's an X. 
And then you got to go down one, two, three, four, five, six. So you got to go down six. That's up and down, so that's your y. Anyway, so you reduce by two. Six divided by two is three. Four divided by two is two. And there's your rise over your run. And that's how you do that top part. Okay, let's move to the next one. Find the slope. I want to see this. Bubble minus bubble over bubble minus bubble for each one of these. This one right here, let's take a look, special case, y equals 5. Here's my y, so go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It looks like this. The slope is 0. It's a flat line. Okay? Find the slope parallel. All you got to do is look here. Your slope is the number in front of the x, so that's a negative 1 over 1. Parallel, you use the same slope. Okay, we're almost done. Stay with me. You got to solve this equation for y to get your slope. Perpendicular, you got to solve for y and then flip change. If you need help, I'll help you. Um, this one wants the line, let's see, this one's parallel, this one's perpendicular. So all you do is use point slope, but look, they want slope intercept form. So you're going to first use this formula, then you're going to distribute and get y by itself. And that's where you're going to do all of this. And that's your work for today. Let's turn our attention now to geometry. All right, on geometry, if you take a look here, this one is all three are the same, so all these angles are 60 degrees. It is called an equilateral triangle. This line, like every line, is worth 180. So what you're going to do is subtract 60 and get 120. So now you've got to split it because these two sides are equal, so those bases are equal. So this one's 60, and this one is 60. Um, this one is 120. And here it is. Now, on your work from Friday, you had Pythagorean's theorem. Now, some of you learned it in algebra, some of you didn't, so take a look up here. Here's how I'm going to teach it to you. You see that box? Some kids like the color. I walk around and I see you got highlights everywhere. Really nice work. So what I want you to do is right now, take your pencil and color that box. Now, which numbers are next to the box? Well, the four is next to the box and so is the three. Those are your legs. This is your hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse goes alone. It's like a loner, okay? So you're gonna do three squared plus four squared equals the hypotenuse squared. Do you remember a squared plus b squared equals c squared? Well, you had like two of these on your workbook work from Friday, okay? And I didn't realize they were there until later in the day. But I'm showing you how to do it now. It's Pythagorean's theorem, and every one of you need to know how to do this, just like distance formula. So take a look. Um, this right here, well, I gave you the five, okay? So... This technically should have been an X. So put an X right here. All right, so I get 9 plus 16 equals X squared. So I get 25 is equal to X squared. Now to get rid of the square, you do something called the square root. And the square root of 25 is 5. And that's how you do Pythagorean's theorem. You have two types. You have one where you got to add if they give you both legs. And then you got a different one where you got to subtract. And maybe we'll get one like that. All right, let's move on. Now look here. These two bases are equal, so this side is equal to that side. In other words, if you put the base equal to the leg, you're going to miss it. So if you say 4x minus 20 is equal to 3x plus 5, you have a leg and a base, and that's going to be wrong. Okay. So scratch that out. The leg is equal to the leg. So right now, put your pencil. Get used to doing this. Put your pencil and go across. These are the two that are equal. So you're going to add 20 to both sides. When you add 20 to both sides, you get 4x equals 40. You divide by 4, and you get x equals 10. And then you're done. All right, on a new sheet of paper, draw this diagram. And try this one. This one's Pythagorean's theorem. Color the box. Come on, I want you to try it. Which ones are next to the box? They go together. Well, 10 is way over here. These are your legs. So you should have x squared plus 4 squared equals the hypotenuse squared. Draw your line. Now work that out. This is 100. 
this is 16, 4 times 4. You're going to subtract 16, and I guess you get 84. And then you get rid of that, you're going to say the square root of 84. And I have no clue what that is. Well, maybe I do. But we're going to put 84 shift, square root. I get 9.2. Make sure you can do Pythagorean's theorem. If you can't work this one or you didn't know how to do it, redo it. Take it home and redo it. It's not going to hurt you. All right. Now, we're going into a new section. Proving triangles congruent. Copy everything you see there. In order for triangles to be congruent, they must have two things. The same size and the same shape. All right, let's take a look at this one. There are two ways right here. Now, there's a bunch, like five or six or so. But there's something called side, angle, side. And there's something called side, side, side. So let's take a look at this triangle here. Now, watch. Notice how this angle is in between the two sides. That's called included. Write that down. It's kind of like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. The good stuff is squeezed in between the bread. That's called included. Well, look here. Let's start with the one mark. One mark. So we have a side. Two mark. Two mark. We have a side. Now, if this angle is in between, then we have side, angle, side. So look. Side, angle, side. Put your pencil on here. Side, angle, side. So this one is side, angle, side. Now let's just say that they didn't put it in between. Let's say they put the angle up here. All right, now watch. This one is side, angle, side, but this one is side, side, angle, or angle, side, side. So this wouldn't work if it was like this, okay? All right, make sure you understood that. Draw this one right here. There's a very important property called reflexive. And the reflexive property is something equal to itself. Something, write this down, equal to itself. That's called reflexive. Kind of like if you look at yourself in a mirror. All right, now look here. We're trying to prove that this triangle is congruent to that triangle. This side right here is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. So put segment BD is congruent to segment BD by reflexive property. That's the reason. Okay? We already have a side. We have AD and CB congruent. Now we have another side. If we can show that this angle right here is congruent to that angle, then we have side, angle, side. And by the way, this side is parallel. So this is alternating interior. If the lines are parallel, so put this. If parallel lines, then alternating interior are congruent. And that's what we have here. Copy this theorem down, okay? So what we have is side, angle, side, side, angle, side. So these are congruent by side, angle, side. So today, you have to look for this property, reflexive. They're going to give it to you a lot, okay? So remember, it's included or it's congruent to itself. Okay, draw this one and copy everything you see. All right, are these two triangles congruent? Well, we're doing side, 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 that's number one, and number two is side, angle, side. And it doesn't matter which one comes first. This one is side, I'm sorry, angle, side, side. There's no such thing, okay? This one is angle, side, side. There's no angle, side, side, and there's no side, side, angle. These are no, they're not congruent, okay? Not congruent, and finally, Let's just do a little bit of a review here so you know. This line is parallel to this line. This is your transversal. Same side interior would be these two, 3 and 8. 3, 8, and 4 and 5. What is corresponding? Top, top. So 2, 8. And bottom, bottom, 3, 7. Make sure you know these if you didn't learn them before. Top, top, bottom, bottom. 1, 5, 4, 6. 
Alternating exterior would be on the outside would be 1 and 7 or 2 and 6. And alternating interior would be 4 and 8 and 3 and 5. And remember, all of these are congruent. The only ones that add up to 180 are the ones that say same side, interior or exterior. I gave you a good rundown, a good review. Make sure you know Pythagorean's theorem. And we're proving triangles congruent today. And here's your work. It's in the workbook. Okay. All right, have a good day. Remember, all your work is due from Friday. It's due Friday, but you have from Friday to Sunday. No excuses. Have a good day.